I recently made videos about creating custom GPTs within ChatGPT, including one with a free prompt template that you can download. The link to that download is in the description of this video as well. Today, I want to dive into the newer feature of ChatGPT called Projects. I'll compare it to custom GPTs, I'll show why they are similar, but also I'll sh reveal which one I prefer to use now. And stick to the end and I'll share a clever workaround for one of the major flaws in projects. So let's look at the differences between custom GPTs and projects. So with custom GPTs, you can create it by clicking on your profile icon, going to my GPTs and create a GPT. Here's your list of custom GPTs that you can create and use. I like to use the configure tab rather than the create tab. You've got the name of the GPT, the description, and then you have your prompt in the instruction section, which is the most important part, defining how the custom GPT behaves. And you can upload files to it for data. So the behavior, what is called the system prompt is in the instructions. That's where you instruct it exactly how you want it to write and behave and the tone of the response. And you can also upload files, of course, for extra data, information that it can access to influence the results that you want. If you want to go into more detail on how to build your own custom GPTs, I have a video on how to build them and I'll link to that at the end of this video. But with projects, what they've done is they've added on the left here on the interface folders called projects. If I click see more, these are the projects I have. So to create a project, you click the plus sign next to the word projects. You can give it a name and it says, what's a project? Projects keep chats, files, custom instructions in one place, use them for ongoing work or just to keep things tidy. So the keeping things tidy, absolutely. So let's give it a name, episode one. And essentially you're creating a new folder in which you can start a chat. And if you look at some of my other projects, so I'll go over this one shortly, is that the chats that are within the project start listing down below. So if I started a new chat, it would add a chat to the list and you have the instructions. So click on the instructions on the right here. And in those instructions, it's exactly the same as the custom GPT instructions. So you paste your prompt, you write your prompt in here, all the instructions, the behaviors. So it even tells you, you can ask chat GPT to focus on certain topics or ask it to certain, use a certain uh, tone or format or for responses. So here you build your prompt and you can add files. So project files is the same as the knowledge data that are in custom GPTs. So very similar to creating your custom GPTs, essentially, it's behaving in the same way. So which one would you be using, custom GPT or projects? Custom GPTs are good for one-off conversations that sit on their own, which I can't come up with any real example because it's hard to think of anything that we do, any tasks that we do, that isn't part of some kind of category of tasks. So when you want to write LinkedIn posts, it falls under that category. If you want to write uh, articles, it's within the, the context of writing your articles in a certain format, certain tone, certain language that you're used to. So it's very difficult to think of one-off conversations. But one thing that maybe the custom GPTs are very good at is being able to share it with your team members. So you can share uh, custom GPT, the link to your custom GPT to other team members, and they can work with it as well. They can communicate with it. And with projects, you can't share it. So that's the big difference I see. If you want to see how to build your custom GPTs to work within your team, share a link with that in the description of this video, because you can really build assistants that work with your team in custom GPTs. With projects, it's a much more personal thing about organizing your conversations within the user interface that OpenAI have given us. So let's look at how you can get projects working for you in the best way. As the age old saying goes, with any AI language model, it's all in the prompt, baby. So <laughs> the quality of the, your results de is dependent on the quality of your instructions. It's just like asking a human to do something. If you ask an average person to make your pizza, that's the instruction here, make me a pizza. Chances are you're going to get quite an average pizza or below average pizza. But if you give them clear instructions with a clear recipe, chances are 
any able person is going to give you quite a decent pizza at least. It's the same with instructing an AI model. Give it good instructions and it's going to give you good results. Which is why I use my prompt template all the time where I define clearly what the role of the AI is, what the tasks are, what the goal of its tasks are, and how I want it to do the tasks. I deep dive into using this template in the description of this video and at the end of the video as well. I do want to point out a flaw in the project at the time of this recording is that you cannot cross-reference conversations or chats that happen within the project. So they can't access each other. Contrary to what many people say online, for some reason, people are saying that you can, you cannot. And I tested it. Let me show you how. I created this project called Sea Monsters. I gave it three conversations, each one with different sea monsters. So it is said in the West, the most dangerous sea monster is the albino sea hydra. Strangely, the non-albino ones are quite relaxed and don't attack. ChatGPT came back with a nice paragraph of kind of going along with this weird fantasy and idea that I've popped into it. I created another one where I write, it is said that in the East, the most dangerous sea monster is the swift serrated eel. It's very difficult to see it coming. It's that fast. And ChatGPT went through that same process again. And it'll even make up stuff. Here's the kicker. It doesn't just rely on speed and stealth. Stories say it is a hypnotic bioluminescent pattern along its sides that can dazzle and confuse prey. So it's actually building extra ideas on top of what I wrote. And then the third one I wrote, it is said that in the north, the most dangerous sea monster is the clam shell turtle. Not because it's aggressive, but because it's so big and armored. If attacked, it's very difficult to beat it in a fight. And again, ChatGPT went through, wrote me a short paragraph this time. And then as a fourth chat, I wrote there, which of the three sea monsters mentioned in the other chats in this project would you fear the least? And it wrote back, it seems no specific sea monsters were mentioned in this project. If you'd like, I can conjure up some hypothetical sea monsters to discuss. So I could write, in this project, there are three chats. Use the monster references in them for the comparison. And you'd expect it to say, okay, in this particular project, are you referring to, referring to a sea monsters project metaphorically involving themes and challenges? See, it's making up stuff. And what it, what I find that it does is that it actually accesses the history on you because ChatGPT keeps history, uh, at least I do, I've allowed it to keep history of, of my conversations. And I also customized it so it knows a bit about me. So it's referring to my work in you as a YouTuber it's referring to my uh, biography that I've given it here. It's saying AI disruption in creativity. That's got nothing to do with the project that we're working in. So the projects, the chats within the projects, these different chats do not know anything about each other. They don't have access to each other's content. What you're working with, the main thing is that you've got your instructions and your files that are connected to the project. So these are the two most important, especially the instructions, are the things that drive your conversations. It's kind of understandable why OpenAI would add that limit to us and are not connected. Imagine having 100 chats in a single project. The amount of, they don't have the bandwidth to deal with that kind of data that's going to come. There's just too much data in a chat. The servers out there that they're using wouldn't be able to handle it. So if we're... 20 to $25 a month paying customers. It's just not worth it for them. Apparently, they're losing on their premium $200 a month uh, subscriptions. They're being overused, basically. The, the, the information, the amount of data that they're issuing is not worth it for the money they're getting. In the future, of course, all these AI models will be able to deal with much bigger amounts of data that in the end, we will be able to cross-reference conversations and it'll get smarter. And agents that are coming this year, AI agents, will be able to access and contain memory, but it requires the language models to be locally uh, uh, placed. So you can see that coming down the road, but right now that's the limitation uh, in projects. The other limitation is if you want to add the files to the project, then you have to use the ChatGPT 4.0 model. If you want to use the ChatGPT 4 or the 0.1 models, then you can't add files to the project. 
And in addition, you can't add custom GPTs into your projects. So for example, if I take this project here that I've got, one of the things I can do is I can drag a conversation into the project. So if I have a project that's not in a, if I have, sorry, if I have a chat that's outside any projects, so take this chat that I had here, I can literally just drag it into a project like this, and it's now part of the project. Let me see if I can drag it out. No. I cannot. So in the three dots here, I can remove uh, the chat from the project and you can organize your projects accordingly, just like you would do any folders within your operating system. So should you be using projects within ChatGPT? Heck yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like them. I, I think they're actually a really good tool, a good addition to ChatGPT. Let me show you an example of why I say this. So if I go into my GPTs, I have all my custom GPTs that I've created here in the list. I have one that's called YouTube Description Expert. So that's a GPT that writes my descriptions for every video I make. So I give it my transcript of my videos after editing, and it writes me that quickly, that description that you see it in my description of my videos. I just speed my process up in writing them. Obviously, I edit them afterwards. I have one that called LinkedIn Video Promoter. So that writes after my videos up and posted on YouTube. I also want to promote it on LinkedIn and Facebook. It writes my social media posts in the format that I want it to do. And then I also have one that writes, gives me ideas for titles for my YouTube videos. I have one here called Uscript that writes an outline for based on ideas that I give it to my YouTube videos. So I have quite a few custom GPTs that each one has its own function, each with its own prompt. So they're very specific prompts for very specific responses and, and tasks that I wanted to give in very specific formats. So what I can do with project is combine all the prompts, separate prompts of my custom GPTs. I made a master prompt, which takes all the tasks and organizes them. And I wrote them in as one single prompt that gives me the results of all of them. How to write a YouTube title, a video title. How do I want you to write a LinkedIn post? How do I want you to write in the description of a video? I can write, give it instructions on how to write a YouTube script outline. And I place all of that big master prompt in the instructions of the project, right? And it's a long prompt, as you can see. And if I feed it a transcript of a video I recently edit, edited, then it'll know how to perform just like a custom GPT does. It'll write me the LinkedIn post, it'll write me the video description as well. So basically, they're working in the same way. Yeah, the projects and the custom GPTs are actually doing the same thing. It's just much more organized here in the projects. So now for the workaround for the major flaw of projects, which is, as I mentioned, cross-referencing conversations. So I had tried it here in, I created originally a project called YouTube Channel Helper, where I was hoping this conversation would be able to access information about this conversation, and it didn't work. So what I did is I created a new project where I gave it that master prompt. In addition, what I did is I added three files from three of my videos, so the transcripts of three of my YouTube videos about creating custom GPTs, um, how to build a custom GPT, how to write a prompt, how to write it for a custom GPT, and also how to use a custom GPT as part of your team. So I gave it three files, each with the transcripts of each of the videos. In addition, there was the title of the videos, the thumbnail image description of the in, from the video, the text that I used in the thumbnail, the LinkedIn promotion, the text or the post of the LinkedIn that promoted the video, and uh, also the description of the video from YouTube. So each file had that for every video, and I placed them into uh, as part of the project files. And now I could, I can access essentially the conversation I would have about that those videos, which is what I tried to do earlier, where I fed it into a chat, um, separate chat, where I work per chat on each video, and I want to be able to access each. So basically, treat the project files almost as conversations. You could 
copy and paste a chat like this. Here's a chat that I had with it about an idea of a video. And I could copy and paste all this text by just dragging and copying and pasting it into a Word file or a text file, loading it up into the project files and basically having access to that conversation. So it's a workaround on saying, okay, you can't access this particular chat, so you're going to access it through the project files. So that's one way of cheating the, the system in a way. I think there's probably a limitation to how many project files you can add into a project. My guess is just like a normal chat GPT, probably around the 12 different files. So you can switch, you know, delete them, add new files. It's the way I, I'm going to start working with projects. So as you can see, projects within ChatGPT can be really useful for organizing your chats, your conversations you're having with it. It drives me crazy to honestly, when I see computers and their desktops and everyone's messy with their filing system. I like to try to keep my files organized. And um, yeah, I, I, this long list of chats that it has on the side here, it, it just drives me crazy. But when you look at all the other competitors of ChatGPT, Claude, or a perplexity and the like, they all have this interface that, frankly, I wish they would just improve on. Um, and I'm sure they will. I do expect these companies to improve on their user interface as time goes by. But And I do want to compare the Claude project with ChatGPT projects in a future video, if I can. I intend to. My preference is now, to be honest, because I'm not working within a team right now, I veer towards working within projects versus custom GPTs. I'll be probably moving away from custom GPTs because I'm working as a solo person. But if I was in a team, if I went back into managing a team at a high-tech company, for example, I would absolutely use custom GPTs to work within the team setting. I would, because you can share them and basically have one assistant, one custom GPT doing the same task for multiple people. Whereas in projects, I can't share that capability with a team. If you like this video, click the like button and do subscribe to my channel. It'll support me to reach that first milestone that YouTube give us to reach that thousand subscribers. And I'm inching slowly, slowly getting closer to that number. Uh, so do support me. If you want more AI tips and tricks, do hit that subscribe button for me. And if you want to learn more about how to build your own custom GPTs and use the prompt template that I mentioned in this video, click on these two links here.